Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks again for joining me while we're looking to some more Commander Legends. Spoilers. So this is the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, Commander Spoilers. Did I say Commander Legends? Anyways. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into it because they are throwing out so many products that I'm having trouble. Not that I'm keeping tabs on it as much as I used to, but having trouble keeping up with it anyways. So let's have a look at what's come out in the last couple of days. So a Chaos Dragon is one colorless, two red for a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste. Chaos Dragon attacks each combat if able. Man, that better be a huge drawback. That's amazing. At the beginning of the combat on your turn, each player rolls a d20. If one or more opponents have the highest result, Chaos Dragon cannot attack those players or planes because they control this combat. This is still a amazing card. Oh my god. That's... <laughs> Oh, uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, Maddening Hex, one colorless, two red for an enchanted player or a curse. Whenever enchanted player casts a non-creature spell, roll a d6. Maddening Hex deals damage to that player equal to the result. Then attach Maddening Hex to another one of your opponents chosen at random. Not bad. Once it's on the field, someone has to destroy a world enchantment or target enchantment, and then they can get rid of it. But otherwise, it's just going to slowly do more damage as time goes on. Wild Endeavor for four colorless, two green for a sorcery. Roll two d4s and choose one result. Create a number of three three green beast creature tokens equal to that result. Then search your library for a number of basic land cards to the other result and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle. So for six mana, you could get four three threes and four lands. Average is going to be 2 2, which is going to still be amazing. You're pretty much getting 2 3 threes and 2 lands for the price of one card. That feels good. That feels pretty decent. Bag of Tricks, one colorless, one green for an artifact. Tap 4, one green. Tap. Tap. Roll a d8. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with mana value equal to the result. Put that card onto the battle, uh, onto the battlefield and the rest in, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Hmm. That doesn't feel as good. You're paying five mana. I like the art, but you're paying five mana. And tapping a two mana artifact and then rolling a d8, which means the average is going to be four. And then you're hoping that you get something four from your, what happens if your library just gets thinned out? I mean, isn't the games of commanders now like topping out a run about like, you know, you can have an eight drop, you can have a six and seven drop and so on. And they're pretty much going to, hit the board and probably win you the game, which means that you could do it maybe one or two turns early and dig really deep. But you're betting on two different random chances. One of them is you're betting on the fact that you have only one of those mana level cards, otherwise you're going to get the wrong one. And then you're betting on the fact that your d8 rolls onto the right number. Eh. It looks like fun, but eh. Indomitable will uh, might. Uh, three colorless, one green for a flash enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, plus three. Enchant Enchanted creature's controller may assign its combat damage as though it were not blocked. Pretty impressive. That could be a one turn kill, especially if your commander is already sitting at like 16 or 17 power. Swing in with this, they block it with a 1 1, and then you destroy them for 21 damage. I assume that all counts as commander damage. Not bad. Kind of annoying way to lose might cause a lot of people to pause the game right there to then jump in to try to, you know, destroy the creature. But still pretty cool. Berserker's Frenzy, two colorless, one red for an instant. Cast the spell only before combat or during combat before blockers are declared. Roll two d20s and ignore the lower roll. One to fourteen, choose any number of creatures they block at this turn if able. Fifteen to twenty, you choose which creatures block this turn and how those creatures block. Is this not just a cheaper version of the Boros card that lets you pretty much figure out exactly how you want to deal damage and who blocks and who attacks and everything? Right? They already have a card like this. The only thing that that card was for. But then again, in a Boros deck, you're just going to have Sunforge and hope that you just get Sunforge early 
So you can filter out actually having two of these is pretty cool. So with Sunforger, red cards and white cards can become pretty cool. Instance. I think it's mainly instance. Cluts will one color, uh, sorry, X, Y, two red, one green for an instant. Choose one if a controller, if you control a commander as you cast a spell, you may choose both. Breath Flame. The will deals X damage to each creature without flying. Smash relics, destroy up to X target artifacts and or enchantment. Pretty good. Dru Druid of Purification. Three colorless, one green for a 2-3. Whenever, when Druid of Purification enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player might choose a artifact or enchantment you don't control. Destroy each permanent chosen this way. Um, this is insanely strong. That is insanely strong. For a four mana, it's an enter the battlefield, and they cannot pick any of your artifacts or enchantments. Oh boy, that is not going to be a cheap card. Neverwinter Hydra, two XX symbols and two green for a Hydra. Zero zero. As Neverwinter Hydra enters the battlefield, roll XD6. It enters the battlefield. It enters with the number of plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the total of these results. It's got Trample and it's got Ward 4. Eh, feels kind of expensive, but pretty cool. Vengeful Ancestor, 2 colors, 2 green, uh, two red for a Spirit Dragon with flying. It's a 3-4. When Vengeful Ancestor enters the battlefield or attacks, go target creature. Pretty amazing. Whenever goaded creature attacks, it deals 1 damage to its controller. Pretty decent. Um, truthfully, you'd want to play this guy in a goad deck, but I don't know if that exists or not. Let's find out. Dragonborn Champion, two colors, one green, one red for a 5-3 Trampler. Whenever a source you control deals five damage to a player, five or more damage to a player, draw a card. Pretty awesome. Wolfgar of the Icewind Dale. Ah, there he is. Three colors, one green, one red. Yeah, that makes sense. Human Barbarian, Melee, whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn for each cre each opponent you attack this combat. So you can pick all of your opponents, three of them, so you add plus three, plus three, so this guy can become a 7-7, seven, seven, which is cool because he does get stronger the more people he fights in the books. I, no, I mean, he goes berserk, so. If a creature you control attacking would cause a trigger ability of the permanent you control to trigger, that trigger dish, uh, that Ability triggers an additional time. Awesome. Oh boy. Wand of Arcus. Arcus. Two colorless, one black for a legendary artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature can, uh, whenever equipped creature attacks or blocks, it and zombies you control gain death, death charge until the end of turn. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens. Pretty awesome. Thorough Investigation, whenever you attack, investigate for two colorless, one white. Pfft, amazing. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, venture into a dungeon. Okay. Uh, oh boy, okay. Um, Rod of Absorption, two colorless, one blue for an artifact. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, exile it instead of putting it into a graveyard as it resolves. Boy, okay, some of these are, you know what, I'm going to speed through this because this is getting, this is a lo much longer video than I expected. Five colorless, one white for a 3-6 angel. Is that a guy angel? Mm. Um, 3-6 for a flying lifelink. Whenever Radiant Solar or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, venture into a dungeon. That feels pretty powerful. Pay one white, discard Radiant Solar, venture into a dungeon, and you gain three life. I guess that's cool. Three colorless, one blue for a creature, horse illusion with flash. Four three. When Phantom Steed enters the battlefield, exile another target creature you control until Phantom Steed leaves the battlefield. Whenever Phantom Steed attacks, create a tap and attacking copy that's a copy of the exiled creature, except it's an illusion in its addition to its other types. Sacrifice that token at the end of combat. Pretty awesome. It kind of protects another creature, and then using this, you can continue swinging with that other creature. And even even if it's your commander, or even if it's a legendary creature, because it removes it and then makes tokens off a new creature. 
So, Midnight Path Lighter, two colorless, one white, one blue for a 2 3. Creatures you control cannot be blocked except by legendary creatures. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, venture into a dungeon. Okay, cool. Um, let's move through and see what else is cool. Let me know in the comments if you found one of these to be really cool. They have a lot of text, I will say. Um, Min Willy Illusionist, one colorless, two blue for a 1 3. Gnome Wizard. Whenever you draw a second card each turn, create a 1 1 blue illusion creature token with this. This creature gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other illusion you control. Pretty awesome. Whenever an illusion you control dies, you may put a permanent card with mana value less, or, less than or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh boy, that is a new deck type. For sure. Nihilor. Two colorless, one white, one blue, one black for a horror. 3 5. When Nihilor enters the battlefield for each opponent, tap up to one untapped creature you control. When you do, gain control of target creature that a player controls with power less than or equal to the tapped creature's power for as long as you control this card. Whenever you attack with a creature an opponent owns, you gain two life and that player loses two life. Perfect. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. There are a lot of cards for sure. Like I said, I have jumped into this late. Caddy Bree. Okay. One green, one white for a human archer 2-2. Two, two. First strike and reach. Pretty good stats for that. Whenever Cadibri of Mithril Hall attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each equipment attached to it. Amazing. Pay one colorless. Remove all plus one plus one counters from Cadibri. It deals X damage to target attacking or block region opponent controls, where X is the number of counters removed this way. Cool. Did my screen just get dim? Anyways. Starvold, Frost Giant Yarl. Is it a big guy? Hmm, okay, cool. Um, I actually did not. Oh, Beholder. Three colorless, one black, one red for a legendary creature Beholder. And whenever you attack a player, ta tap target creature that player controls and goad it. Whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents, you and the attacking, e you and the attacking player each draw a card and lose one life. Amazing. Amazing. These are some really cool cards. Okay, guys. I want to leave it at that. Um, this is a unexpected surprise, but this may be a Commander Dex the deck that I'm interested in. But since they have 12 of them every year, maybe that's not something to worry too much about. Anyways, thanks again for joining me. Have a good one, and talk to you guys later. See ya.